Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome to the Mary and Sam Show. We're so delighted you could join us. Um, Mary and I have been talking about uh, fear of failure and why fear actually stops us from doing what we want over the last few shows. If you haven't, please go back and check out the last three. That said, Mary, I had a great idea about what was talk what we were talking about is one of the steps in fear of failure is that some people fear, uh, see failure as a temporary thing while others see it as a permanent thing. Uh, those who see life as temporary failures tend to succeed more often than those who are fearful that they're going to make a permanent mistake. Therefore, they never take any chances. And as we all know, those who take the most risk get the most reward. What's your thoughts? Well, fear of failure, like you said, we've been talking about this. The reason we wanted to talk about this because it's it's uh, such a such a negative thing that could hold us back in so many different ways, like in our relationship, at the job opportunity we want to take, at the business opportunity, mm -hmm. um, places we want to move, and you know, for some reason we think like we shouldn't move because X, Y, Z. There's always that thought in the back of our head that what if I make the wrong decision? What if I would make a mistake? And some people have made some mistakes in the past and they kind of get stuck. They get stuck somewhere in their life. They can't move forward because they're afraid that they're going to make the same mistakes. Right. Or they're just afraid to make the decisions that is going to open up so many opportunities in life and they're fearful. They're afraid that they're going to make the wrong mistakes and right. they're going to be a de decision that will be so detrimental that they cannot uh, recover from right i heard something once is take some risks but take calculated risks and don't take a risk that you can't recover from but that doesn't mean don't take any risk imagine being so fearful you can't even walk out of your house every day because you're going to think oh my god what will happen so uh, you know this is an interesting point because like i said i come across people who are very fearful and that they're gonna make the wrong decision, so they take no decision. A lot of that is just that inaction, is just kind of that fear paralyzes some people. Right. And I think what we're talking about is, look, think about this, do something that you've been fearful about, or if it's a career move, or you wanna take some kind of more further education or something like that, you know, time will pass and everything will be fine, so you don't wanna be, you know, let fear hold you back, whether it's in your career or job or marriage, relationship, whatever. Yeah. I Take think, a decision. I think it's the, the worst thing is to be doubtful about situations and decisions you want to make. You're not so sure if it's the right decision or not. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a conversation with one of my cousins last night and she said, well, I remember this conversation with you that she wanted to take a trip to New York and for some reason it was such a difficult decision for her. So she called me and she said, well, I'm in a dilemma. I really don't know if I should take this trip to New York or not. And I was like, well, what if tomorrow you would die? Yeah. And then she goes, what? I said, what if tomorrow you die? She goes, okay, well, then I'm going to New York. <laughs> because from that perspective, things seem much more clear. Right. Because we give it so much thought and we're such a doubtful state of mind that we can't make the right decision. So I think sometimes it's really good to fast forward and think about the bigger picture. It's like, what could be the worst thing if you do this one decision? Right. What it, could be the worst thing? Yeah, and oftentimes when you think about, well, what the worst thing is, it's not quite as bad as you, we make it up in our heads to be. I mean, really, that's another good strategy or tool to use is uh, what's the worst thing that can happen? And if you think about it in those terms, Really, the worst thing is not all that bad, you know? Right. And also, when you think about the worst case, it, it takes you to that, uh, the real reason why you want to do something. Mm. Um, and so it makes it a lot easier to make that decision. Um, I, I think there are two types of minds. Like One is like when you look at an opportunity, you want to make a decision, um, the mind automatically goes into that type A that they're thinking about negative sides of it. Right. It's like, what... Well, the things that could go wrong all the time, all of the things that could go wrong, right? It's like, what if this could go wrong? What if that could go wrong? And when you think like that, you're going to be in doubtful situation. You're not going to make the right decision. Yeah. Versus you could think about all the different possibilities that could go right. And sometimes people don't think about the possibilities that could go right. They think about the possibilities that could go wrong. And when you're focusing on the wrong possibilities, you are going to be in doubtful state of mind. 
and yeah. making decisions are going to be difficult. Yeah, Mary, you know, one thing I, I think we discussed this over the week was, is, you know, you and I come from a sales background, so we're kind of exposed to this kind of thought process. We need to continually work with ourselves and evolve and, 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 and take steps to move forward because, again, in sales, you know, there's a lot of fear of rejection. Yeah. And so you we're, we're working on ourselves consistently to make that happen. But those people who aren't in sales, who don't encounter this, right. it may seem new or odd to you. Why are we talking about this stuff? But really, when you think about it, a lot of this happens in real life quite often. Uh, someone you mentioned, which was a trip to New York, others, they're afraid of doing, you know, just, just, just getting out of the house for whatever reason. Right. And, and, and you don't want to, to let it hold you back from anything because uh, there's a world of opportunities that await you. Right. Or I think also it could be really a nice um, suggestion to write the pros and cons of that decision that you're making. And when you see the pros and cons, you know, when you see all the benefits of making that decision outweighs the disadvantages, right. then it makes your decision very, very clear. Yeah. Um, I remember there was a, a gal that I was coaching and she wanted to move to DC. Right. And it was like, she goes, oh my God, it's such a, such a stressful time. I, I don't know how am I going to make this decision. So we wrote down the pros and cons. Yeah. You know, what could happen if she could move down to DC or if she does move and things don't work out, she would come back. So that all different possibilities. And then on paper, it seemed so much more easy and clear. Right. And she did make the move to DC and she told me it was the best decision she ever made. Wow, that's awesome. You know? so, Good for her. <laughs> uh, well you know and that's a powerful technique right there that zig ziglar taught us as well is to use a yellow pad especially in a sales environment obviously it doesn't have to be a yellow pad when you're sitting at home and thinking about this yellow pad blue pin for those salespeople. the rest of us use any color pen you want uh, the point is, is you write down the pros and cons of a certain decision that you have to make mm -hmm. and and see really what is the pros and what is the cons and see which side is your stronger argument for wanting to do that decision. And based on that, it takes away the emotion out of the decision making process and therefore you can f move forward. So I think that's a great tip that they can use going forward on, on some decisions where they're fearful about. And obviously, if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. All right. Thank you so much. Till next time. Thank you.